This is our third talk and looking at popular diets in the United States. We talked about intermittent fasting and then we talked about low carb keto. And the next two on there were plant-based whole food diets and Mediterranean. And they really kind of fit together. This is why. What is a Mediterranean diet? Well, it differs for different people, but generally it's this. There's lots of vegetables in a Mediterranean diet. Beans, lentils, legumes, um, minimally processed grains, uh, good fats, uh, good fats, whole fats, virgin olive oil. You think of Mediterranean, think of olive oil. Um, eat fish, unprocessed meats, real eggs, whole foods, and then dairy, preferably cultured dairy, is uh, common in the Mediterranean region. And then alcohol. How lovely you get to have a glass of wine on the Mediterranean diet. This kind of fits with the plant-based diet because it's very plant-based diet. What makes the Mediterranean diet so good? I think it's exactly that. The fact that it's plant-based and it's whole foods. This is just a meta-analysis about Plant, the Mediterranean diet and, and why it's good and how it's good. And so I just wanted to show one of these. What this shows then, number of studies, 20, number of participants, and then we have the p-value, whether it's significant. Was body weight significantly better with the Mediterranean? Yes, it was. Body mass index, some of these things changed. They weren't significant. Um, total fat mass didn't change that much. Blood pressure, both systolic and diastolic, went down significantly with the Mediterranean diet. Blood glucose went down with this diet. You can see all of these different parameters. And uh, HDL cholesterol, again, looking at the markers of metabolic syndrome, they all improved on this. Triglycerides, they went down by 12, significantly went down. And then C-reactive protein. This is a marker of inflammation in your body. And when you eat all these whole foods, plant-based foods, it goes down significantly. So again, tuber necrosis factor, that's also a marker of inflammatory index we use a lot, and it went down significantly. And then flow media dilation, it went up. That means your blood flowed better. So is a Mediterranean diet good? Yes, why is it good? probably because of all of the plants. So I'm gonna compare here the main diets. We have low carb one way, and then we have low fat over here. And then we have some people that say, no, plant-based protein is what you want, vegan. And then others say, no, animal protein is what you want, paleo. And then there are the two diets for the past 30 years. Ornish, he said low fat, and vegan. And then you had Atkins that said high fat paleo. And I was wondering, what do these have in common? They both show that they, they work. There's studies all over. And so I started looking, and what is the one thing that they have in common? Well, they eat fewer processed foods, so they eat whole foods. More leafy greens, more cruciferous allium vegetables, more herbs and spices. Now these diets, we've been talking about how the high fat diet tends to be better in certain respects, and it does. But the Ornish diet has shown great results over the past 30, 40 years too. Now, why do they both work? It's for these reasons, I believe. And that gets back to the whole food, plant-based diet. This is not a new idea <laughs> of eating green leafy. Genesis 129, and God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in which is fruit of the tree yielding seed, it should be food for you. Now, whether you believe this is God's directive to mankind or not, it's old. This was written about 3,500 years ago. I don't know exactly, but thousands of years ago. Huh, who would have had the forethought to tell us to eat these whole foods, these, these green plants with seeds, and these fruits that yield seed in there. Huh, I actually think it is. I think it's a, a divine revelation for us. But whether you believe that or not, it doesn't really matter here because it was said thousands and thousands of years ago. Why? Why was it said? 
this is just looking at one cup of spinach. One little cup of spinach, it's about one fluffy ounce because it's all, you know, if you cooked it down, it'd be a lot less. But a cup of it is about seven calories, 0.4% of your calories for the day. One half of 1% of the calories in this bowl of spinach. What do you get for this? Well, you get vitamin K, 181%. What? Half of a 1% of your calories gives you almost 200% of vitamin K? Wow. And then beta carotene, 56% with only one half of a percent of your calories for the day. Folate, 15, vitamin C, 14, has lutein that helps present, prevent macular degeneration. It has lots of minerals, magnesium, iron. Think of this. <laughs> Why do all these diets work? Well, they quit eating junk food, all of the cookies and the crackers and the white flour and you start eating plants, look what just one bowl of spinach does for us. It's amazing. Now, cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, these uh, are called crucifers because the leaves cross like this. It looks like a, a cross. And so they're cruciferous vegetables. That doesn't mean anything except that they have these special compounds in them, isothiocyanates. And these compounds are very necessary for phase two enzymes. So uh, glutathione reductase and uh, quinone reductase and glutathione uh, S reductase, these are the two antioxidants in your body. They keep you from rusting from the inside. So you leave a car out in the weather, especially here on South Padre Island, and the air, the oxygen gets there and it just breaks down the metal from this beautiful metal to rusty junk. Well, that happens in all of us. Um, if you leave, take an apple and you cut it and you leave it out, it turns brown instantaneously. <clears throat> it starts oxidizing. And so what do these enzymes do? They keep us from oxidizing. We talk about COVID and these cytokine storms. Well, what squelches the cytokine storms are antioxidants. And that's what we have in our body that our body makes, but sometimes it gets overcome with too many free radicals. and so what builds these, these molecules up in our body that are our own antioxidants? Cruciferous vegetables. Here's just one study. I think I'm gonna show you a couple so about proliferation of cancer cells. Now this is not in a human, this is human cells, but it's in a Petri dish. And so what we find is, is as you have more and more of this indol 3 carbonyl on these prostate cancer cells, that the prostate cancer just keeps going down. Quite amazing at what this does. And then sulforaphane is another compound in these crucifers on colon cancer cell lines. And we see the same thing that as you increase more of this sulforaphane, that the growth of these cancer cells is diminished. Isn't that amazing? That should encourage us all to eat more green leafy vegetables, more cruciferous vegetables in our diet. What is a cruciferous vegetable? Well, the ones we mentioned already, but arugula, bok choy, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, collard greens, kale, all of these are, are foods that we can eat, except for wasabi. No human should eat that because it tastes nasty. And uh, I've tried it before, no matter how tiny little bit of it I put on, whatever, that little green dollop on my plate, I just brush it off but I, I eat a lot of these other ones. I try and eat broccoli and cauliflower uh, almost every day uh, to get the cruciferous vegetables in. Think about this now, the green leafy vegetables, the cruciferous vegetables, you can easily go through an entire day and never touch one of those to your tongue. Um, in a diet where you get up and you have cold cereal for breakfast, toast and jelly, or for lunch you have a, a hamburger uh, on a white bun, and some french fries and for dinner you have a good meal with uh, three pieces of green beans on the plate and, and two leaves of lettuce and then a bunch of processed foods on the plate. You cannot even get this. And there's some fun ways to eat cruciferous vegetables. Allium vegetables, onions, garlic, and leeks. These have been known for medicinal reasons for years. Garlic has been used for 4,000 years. The sulfur compounds in garlic then Eat one clove a day will help decrease blood cholesterol levels. They're antimicrobial, anti-carcinogenic, and they can 
cancer preventive. They're amazing things um, in um, <clears throat> well, all of these, uh, the, all of the alien vegetables. Mainly we're talking here about garlic. Garlic has nothing until you crush it. Some of the other ones do. If you smell an onion, you can smell an onion. But if you smell a bulb of garlic, you smell nothing. And so until you crash, until you crush the, the cells that are there, um, these, form, these are not formed. What we're talking about here with allicin and the diallyl sulfides, those are formed when you break the, the outside of the cell and those chemicals are formed, then you can smell it. It's that smell, that's the actual effective compound that's in here. So you have to, you have to chop it, cut it, smash it before you cook it. This is just one study on prostate cancer again. It's, it's prostate cancer cells in a Petri dish. And the more you add, then the less is the growth of the prostate cancer. How much do you need? One to three cloves a day. And uh, is that doable? Yes. So I, I tested it on my students. I gave them uh, spaghetti and a cup of spaghetti sauce. And then it's kind of bland. And so I put one clove in per cup. And they said, this is pretty good. They couldn't figure out why. And then I put three cloves in there, three cloves per cup of tomato sauce, I thought, oh, that's garlic, that tastes really good. And I thought, why not? So I put 20 cloves of garlic into one cup and then the students would eat it and go, hot, hot. So 20 cloves is too much. But you can get one to three cloves in very easily in any kind of a sauce, whatever you're making. If, even if it's a pre-made sauce from the store, and get a little garlic press, get a garlic, crush it up, put it in there and have garlic, add it to what you're already eating. All right, last herbs and spices, herbs or herbs as you might, uh, amazingly beneficial. This is just one study on rosemary and we're gonna look at the antioxidants in rosemary. And what this shows is when you gave these little mice a cancer causing agent, um, within 15 weeks, they all had cancer. And then you gave them 1.2 milligrams of rosemary, it cut the cancer in half. And then 3.6 and the cancer couldn't hardly get going. So our herbs and spices beneficial, they're incredibly beneficial. They make food taste good and that makes us eat it. And then when we do that, it gives us these benefits. Turmeric is the last one, I think. It's the yellow coloring in, in lots of spices. It's the yellow coloring in curry. It's about 28% of curry powder. It contains these curcuminoids that are extremely beneficial. And this is just a study looking at a uh, cancer-causing agent. You gave the cancer-causing agent to the little um, nude mice and 95% got cancer. You gave them Taxol, which is a cancer drug, and it cut it down by about 20%, and then gave them curcumin, and it cut it by 50%. You gave the curcumin with the taxol and it decreased the cancer by 80%. That's amazing. So many studies out here about the benefits of this. You can eat it as a spice, you can use it as a supplement, but it has beneficial effects. So thanks uh, for watching these. This is the last one then. And looking at the popular diets in America today, we went through fasting as number one, and we looked at the ketogenic and low carb diet. And now we just finished this short one on Mediterranean, plant-based. They're all good for you if you do them correctly. You can do the ketogenic diet wrong and have no plants, and that's not a good idea. You know, you can have plant-based diet, but if it's all highly processed, then you're losing some of the benefits. So whole food, plant-based diet uh, would do wonders for you. Thanks.